Stasa 23 here, and today we have the Best Tech Slither. This knife comes in at $68, and if this isn't the variation you enjoy, they have seven. Yes, you heard me right. Seven different variations of this knife with a coated blade, non-coated blade. Just go check them out. Uh, I will have links down in the description if you're interested in picking one of these up. Let's get the specs out of the way. You have a total length of 8.32 inches, so it's a nice full-size EDC knife. You have a 3.6 inch blade and a 3.9 inch grip area from here all the way to the back. You have a nice thicker handle scale thickness at 0.59 inches and a pretty slender uh, close width in the pocket at 1.1 inches. You have a chunky blade stock at 0.15 and the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife is around 18 thousandths behind the edge sharpened at 24 degrees per side. I see this knife as a good work knife with the beefier blade stock and the thicker scales, and it just feels like a, you know, a hefty knife. Um, now, let's take a closer look at this. You have, you know, a nice reverse tanto blade, kind of reminiscent of, say, the, the Benchmade 940s blade, except this one's a little bit more broader, and I think it's more similar to the uh, CRKT Montoza with that wider blade. This is that Richard Rogers design. And I like this, I like this blade. You have, you know, uh, less, you know, more gradual belly to that tip. And being that you have this kind of somewhat of a clip up here in the front, that's gonna give you a more robust tip because you have more uh, steel behind it. Um, Cause you're meeting that belly down. So you got a nice uh, robust tip there. You know, if you have to do some, you know, like twisting into some wood or something, you should be perfectly okay with that. Uh, the blade steel on this is 14C28 in, and Best Tech usually does an outstanding job with their heat treating. At least every knife I've ever tested from them have done remarkable. And uh, this particular one has their gray titanium coating on it. And like I said earlier, if, you, if that's not your thing, you can get it an uncoated satin blade as well. Um, you have a dual, you have dual fullers that are just for aesthetics on this one. You can't use it as a deployment. At least I can't because it's, it's, it's not sharp enough. You have um, speed holes inside that fuller. As you can see, that's just helping to reduce the weight of the blade to make this knife balance. And Best Tech always, always balances their knife perfect, which makes the knife feel lighter in the hand. Uh, you have a small row of jimping. That gives you a little bit of traction, but it's kind of, you know, pushed back. Uh, it'd been nicer if, if you're gonna put, put a little bit longer row. I know some people like that. Now you do have a nice uh, flat spot to put your thumb on. So I had no problems during the testing, feeling like I was gonna slide off that spine. You do have a sharpening troll that clears the plunge just barely and it'll probably give you one sharpening before it starts to widen up in the back right here. However, you can fix it because that stop pin is in the front over here. Best Tech uh, usually is mindful of that. Knife has a flat grind on it that comes down, you know, as thin as they could get it with that short, you know, height right there and that thicker blade stock. So let's see how that thicker edge performs. I'm kind of interested. My knife came with a pretty good edge out of box. It's slicing well, um, and I, I, I kind of like this blade shape. Um, you know, I don't use a whole lot of reverse tantos like this. That It has a nice low tip on it, uh, meaning it just has gradual belly, good enough a straight edge portion that, you know, makes it easy to make these type of cuts. Uh, I didn't feel like I was sliding out or anything. Um, and we got a nice full-size blade here. I think this probably could make a good work knife. It just feels like it's nice and robust. And uh, we'll see how this edge holds up. And we're gonna test the ergos and see how well that edge wants to bite. And initially, you know, it's performing really good. Um, I, I got a good handle on the knife, even though it's a kind of narrow scales, you got thicker scales, so it fills out the hand nicer. I did notice, however, whenever I started increasing that pressure, I could start feeling that clip. I'm, that's what I'm talking about right now. Um, I just kind of repositioned and it wasn't uh, terrible or anything. I just noticed it. Um, it was definitely pressing down on me because of the way the clip sits and where it sits. So, uh, you know, it's just depending on how big your hand is. 
this is what I meant with that load tip. It makes doing these drag cuts very easy. You don't have to lift the knife up too high. Um, and then that little piece of belly makes it very easy to cut on the flat surface. Um, uh, it, this is where this knife really started to shine, doing you know all these cutting <coughs> tasks on, on a flat cutting board. Um, it, it did good on this first piece of rubber. I did notice that on this one, uh, it did caught the, that titanium coating did cause a little bit of drag, not bad. And like I said, it is, it is a heavier duty knife. Um, it's still performing nicely. Best Tech, every knife I've ever tested for them has a good heat treat on it. Uh, the knife has bite to it. It's blasting through the denim and it, it was very comfortable doing so in a pinch grip. Um, I definitely feel like it's going to do good on the rope because of how well it's doing here. And we moved to the half inch sisal rope and uh, hopefully I'll caught that, but I did a nice push cut and it's just popping the material. Um, it is a thicker, uh, it is thicker up there by that tip because of the way that uh, the tips form from the spine like that dropping down to the belly. So it's good for, you know, some strength at the tip and uh this edge is just really nice uh it's got good toothiness to it and, and it's making chart work of this i'm not using a whole lot of pressure uh pinch grip's comfortable i do have gloves on but that's just so i don't get blisters um and it, it's blasting through it you know, i was i was definitely surprised and I may have to check out more reverse tanto knives. Ended up making 45 cuts until we run out of rope. I think that's more than acceptable. Um, I know I was happy with it. All right, let's test this edge. It still feels really good. Yep. My, it's, it's not as sharp up there by the tip, but I would still call that pretty darn good. Let's check just by the tip. Yeah, see the tip. Took a lot of that uh, that rope cutting, but I'd say one one quick drop and it would be back. Oh, it's really not bad. I definitely call that good. All right, let's close the knife up and take a look at the action. This is a flipper deploying knife only. Like I said, I cannot. Oh, <laughs> I made myself a liar. Okay, now I can. I'm I'm I can't do it reliably. I don't know. I don't even know how I did it. Okay. Yeah, you just gotta, I gotta push hard on there, but it's not a reliable method to deploy the knife. Uh, the flipper is the way to go. Now, it's a minimal flipper tab and it's got this titanium coating on it. So even though, you know, it would have probably been sharp, it's not. But, you know, I, I haven't really had many occasions where I slipped off of it. Maybe during the, uh, whenever I unboxed it because it had some oil on it. But other than that, it's just fine. Um, and the knife comes rocketing out because it's on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball. Nice drop shut action because you have that heavier blade. Yeah, it's a good action. Now let's close it up and take a look at the handle area. You have the Best Tech logoed pivot there. That does sit a little proud of the scales. Um, you have a Torx T8 for the pivot. Unfortunately, we have a Torx T6 for the body screws and the clip screws. Uh, my particular knife has a uh, dual layered G10 with uh, red underneath the bottom and black over the top. I like red and black combination. I think it looks good. You have nice contoured scales. They did a good job of knocking any hard edges off the sides. You got this nice little chamfer on this side that kind of gives you that stepped look so you can kind of see the, uh, the red and black transition. Now this, this piece right here does have somewhat because of, i don't know if you can see that but there's milled lines on the, these chamfers so it's not sharp but i can definitely feel that i didn't really feel it in hand during the cutting so i'm not gonna really call it any uh you know not an issue and also if you can look closely you can see that there's a micro milling along the scales i think that looks nice as well hopefully that's coming through and it does offer, you know, a little bit of traction, kind of like, um, you know, peel ply does. Hopefully you can hear that. It's, it's not rough or anything, but you can definitely feel it. And flip it over. You have a uh, small G10 backspacer that houses a lanyard pin right there. So they didn't put a hole in there. Awesome job. 
Uh, your liners have that same titanium coating on it, that gray titanium coating. We have a deep carry pocket clip that goes past the scale, so it's gonna sit nice and deep. It's inset into the G10, hopefully you can see that, and the screws have been countersunk. Excellent job. You have a pretty uh, nice size ramp there. Let's check it out in the pocket. I found that it went in and out of the pocket nicely and it does a good job of hugging the left side and completely disappears in the pocket. Now you will have a flipper tab that will come in contact with anything that you put in the pocket, but um, you know, that's not a, a concern of mine. Now it is tip up right hand carry only, unfortunately. And while we're talking about the clip, during the cutting, I did notice that whenever I was uh, pushing through the wood, when I started getting hard, when I started pushing harder into the wood, I noticed I could feel this uh, clip right here. And I was, you know, I was already, you know, thinking I was gonna anyway, because it's narrow in the back right here and uh it's all the way at the it's all the way at the end so where my hand's sitting it was pushing this part was pushing up against my hand it wasn't you know terrible or anything i didn't have to uh I, I didn't feel like i had to throw on gloves but i definitely could feel it now if you had bigger hands than mine which i have a medium-sized hand um you'd probably even feel that more all right let's take a look at the inside you do have skeletonization on both sides to lighten up as much as they could, but it is, you know, still feels uh, like a hefty knife. Let's check it out on the scale. First off in grams, 128.8 grams or 4.54 ounces. That's not terrible. Now let's take a look at the lockup. It's sitting at around, I'd say 40%, maybe 50%. Um, no play side to side, no up and down play, very, very solid lockup and good access to the lock bar because this cutout goes a little bit uh, below the lock and you have that nice little chamfer. It's very easy to get my finger in there and nice and comfortable. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Benchmade 940 and the CRKT Montoza. It's a, it's a little bigger than both of those. Next we have the Ontario Rat Model 1 and 2. It's more in line with the Rat Model 1, but it is a little bit smaller than the Rat 1. Lastly, we have the Kaiser Roach and the Civivi Conspirator. Uh, the Roach is the closest I have to overall length. It's almost identical in overall length. Conspirator is a little bit shorter. All right, let's recap some of my nitpicks and complaints. I uh, would have loved to see a larger sharpening choil, give me more sharpening light back here, maybe a longer row of uh, grippier jimping, and also maybe a grippier set of jimping right here just because of this titanium nitride coating. And also, it would have been nice to have a lower profile clip on a narrower handle like this. Um, however, you know, like I said, it wasn't terrible or anything, but if you had large, extra large hands, this may come in contact with it. So my overall thoughts on the knife, I think it's a really good, heavier user knife. Um, I enjoy carrying it, I enjoy using it. It fills out the hand nicely. Uh, I like this blade shape more than I expected to. It's got nice, nice smooth action. You know, it comes perfectly centered. Best Tech does a good job with their heat treat. $68.14C with from Best Tech quality. I, I think that's more than acceptable. And yeah, I'm interested to hear what y'all think. Did anybody pick one of these up? Or anybody plan on picking one up? If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one.